Hi, I'm Aaron from Living Science Videos. Accurate information has practical application, so in science, the only value a statement can have is if we can show that it's true and how true we can show it to be. If there's no way we can ever know, then it's just an empty assertion with no value at all. That's why science requires that we question assumptions and test our conclusions. Scientific models allow us to make predictions. I don't mean like those you read in fortune cookies or the astrology section of the newspaper. Those are so vague that they can always seem like they're sort of true. I'm talking about specific predictions, which are testable and potentially falsifiable, meaning that there's some way to know whether it's false. When formulating a hypothesis, it should be testable both ways. If your hypothesis is correct, then some discovery or experiment should reveal facts that you've already predicted, which would only be consistent with your explanation. But it's best if there's also a way to prove it wrong, where the result of future experiments or discoveries are not expected and would go against your hypothesis. For example, when Charles Darwin proposed his theory of evolution in 1859, he made several predictions. Other scientists had already recognized that species change over time, but they didn't know the extent of it, and they didn't know how it happened either. Darwin provided something new, the mechanisms to explain it. First, he proposed that populations changed due to a process of natural selection. In any population, there are some individuals that are better adapted or more adaptable than others in a given environment, and these would thrive and reproduce more successfully than the rest, so that over time, their special adaptations would spread throughout the population. And since Darwin's time, field biologists have shown time and again that this actually does happen. And Darwin was a field biologist himself. He had been all around the world, and he knew more about different forms of life than almost anybody else. In fact, he discovered a flower in Madagascar whose nectar was concealed so deep inside it that no known insect could reach it. And Darwin knew that something had to pollinate this plant, so he predicted that there had to be some as yet unknown insect out there in the jungle that had a foot-long tongue, and that insect was finally discovered about 80 years later. Darwin also studied paleontology, so he knew about extinct species, too. Although these were different from anything still alive today, he found fundamental similarities connecting them to distantly related groups in a sort of family tree of all living things. So he predicted that if his theory was true, there should be transitional species discovered in the fossil record, and since then scientists have found hundreds and hundreds of them, with some of those lineages now essentially complete. And Darwin predicted the first one specifically. He recognized that the wings of modern birds looked like they had once been the hands of dinosaurs, but that their fingers had been fused together. So he predicted that if that was the case, then there should be a bird found in the fossil record with unfused wing fingers. And his hypothesis was vindicated just a couple years later when scientists found exactly that. Archaeopteryx lithographica was an incomplete fossil, the head was missing, but it had feathers and free-moving fingers with claws on them. That alone wasn't enough to prove evolution, but this fact had been predicted because it would only be consistent with that one idea and couldn't be explained any other way. So that's an example of a successful hypothesis. Now let's talk about one that failed. One of Darwin's many critics was a professor considered to be the leading authority in the world of that time. Sir Richard Owen said that a bird with fingers wasn't important. He said that didn't mean anything. A bird is still a bird no matter how much it looks like a dinosaur. Owen didn't accept evolution. He thought that new species were deliberately created somehow, according to an archetypal design like a master blueprint. He thought that birds were developed by an intelligent designer as an upgrade to a schematic template for pterosaurs. So Owen thought that birds were based on pterosaurs rather than evolving from dinosaurs. He refused to believe that birds were ever even related to dinosaurs and that they shouldn't have any traits that were like dinosaurs. So he made a prediction of his own. He said that if the head of Archaeopteryx was ever found, it would have a normal toothless beak just like any other bird. <laughs> However, as more fossils were discovered, they found a few prehistoric birds that still had teeth in their beaks. Then a few more examples of Archaeopteryx were found with the head still connected, and they didn't even have beaks yet, but they did have teeth. So Owen's prediction was proven completely wrong. It had been falsified. Evolution takes a really long time, and Darwin had studied geology too, and he knew about the different layers of strata in the geologic column. In his day, there was no fossils yet known older than the Cambrian era. 
He predicted that there should be fossils found prior to that too, and several have been found since. There was as yet no way to date these rock layers other than to tell which ones were older or younger than some other one somewhere else. But from what he could tell at that time, he supposed that the Earth had to be hundreds of millions of years old. And another of Darwin's critics back then was the world's leading physicist, Lord Kelvin, the man who conceived the laws of thermodynamics. Kelvin didn't like evolution either, though he had no scientific argument against it. He said that according to his calculations of thermodynamics, the Earth had to be at least 20 million years old, but that was before they knew that the bowels of the Earth produces its own heat radioactively. And once Kelvin realized that, it pushed the age of the Earth back much further. Today, expert specialists using various methods of radiometric dating estimate the Earth to be around 4.5 billion years old. Darwin was very progressive for his time. Although the whole of anthropology was steeped in racism back in his day, he himself argued that the word race did not actually apply to humanity anymore and that all living humans were in fact the same species and the same race. Based on comparative anatomy, Darwin also predicted that humans had evolved from ape-like ancestors and he guessed that these had probably emerged from Africa. At that time there was no way to test his predictions with experiments, but now we can. DNA sequencing can identify the father in a paternity test, but it can also be used to trace one's ancestry through myriad generations. Darwin didn't know anything about genetics, that's one thing he couldn't get right. But genomic sequence analysis has confirmed Darwin's other predictions. That all humans are indeed the same race, or subspecies. That all our collective ethnic groups trace back to Africa, and native Africans actually show the most genetic diversity of anyone in the world. Phylogenetics has also confirmed that humans are a subset of apes, and several different types of comparative genomics have even revealed universally conserved genes showing that all life really does descend from a common ancestor. Now, a lot of people didn't want to hear that, so Darwin's idea has always had lots of enemies, and they were making predictions too, but all of them have failed. For example, they said that a transitional species should be like a half crocodile, half duck a crocoduck. Darwin had already explained why we should not find something like this, but now we're talking about people who don't know how evolution works. Scientists have actually found many of the intermediate species connecting crocodilians and birds to a common ancestor, but amusingly they also found Anatosuchus, whose name means duck crocodile. And they figured out that the giant Spinosaurus lived a lifestyle that was effectively half duck, half crocodile. And Darwin's critics said that science would never find an animal with a half wing because they don't understand how wings evolve. But now we have several small dinosaurs with essentially half-size wings. And his opponents complained about a missing link that was supposed to be halfway between humans and apes. But that link isn't missing. It was found way back in 1974. Australopithecus afarensis turned out to be a fully bipedal ape whose hands, feet, Teeth, pelvis, skull, and other physical details were exactly halfway between humans and the apes that were known in Darwin's time, and many more fossils like that have been discovered since. Darwin spent his entire adult life studying and researching this topic before he ever published a word about it. He knew he had to. Importantly, he made predictions about exactly what it would take to prove him wrong, and he was pretty good about making specific predictions of things that should only be true if his explanation turned out to be right. 